Welcome, y'all, to So You Mean to Tell Me, episode two. On this episode, we have a very special guest, my man, my man, my man, a.k.a. Trey. Yo, what's going on, y'all? On this episode, we're going to talk about mental health in sports, social media, music, and institutions. Hey y'all, so before we begin, I think it's appropriate to ask Trey how's he doing today. Well, you know, you know, I just got off work. Day went by pretty smooth, so I'm just ready to hop into this, see what we got going today. All right, all right, all right. So the first topic is going to be mental health and sports. So I feel like it's appropriate to talk about stuff that's going on right now, current events. So on this one, we are gonna start with Jordan Poole and Draymond Green. <laughs> That's gonna be the first thing we talk about because you know I see it on Twitter a lot and people make a lot of jokes, you know, a lot of memes about Jordan Poole. And like I said in the first episode, I'm the first one to clown around and joke, but at the same time, I'm real serious about mental health and the situation at hand. I feel like was messed up you know, in Jordan's case. And I feel like don't nobody, isn't anybody taking that serious. So I feel like, babe, you should reiterate to the folks what happened. Well, you know, about a year ago, what it, what this is, July now. So about a year ago, uh, my boy Draymond, as they say, <laughs> sucker punched Jordan Poole while they was um in practice. And, uh, you know, Kind of messed up the team chemistry. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't really know what's going on with him right now. You know, you got Jordan Poole, daddy, you know, talking his uh talking And I'm his on talk. his daddy's side. I mean, you know, it's... Hey, it's an unfortunate situation for Jordan <laughs> Poole. That's all I can really say. I mean, <clears throat> was Draymond wrong? Yeah, he ain't had to hit him. But at the same time, it's just like... It is what it is at this point. Jordan Poole, hey, you, you, you got to protect yourself, son. That's all you got to do. I, I, you say that, but I feel like that's a big man right there. Like, you, Jordan Poole, he, he, he a man, but he, I think, he, what is he, 20, 22, 23? He, to me, he a little boy. Like, not for real, but for real. So I just feel like, as Draymond said, Jordan Poole looked up to him. You know, you was mentoring him. He looked up to you as somebody in the team, and you just go out and you do something like this. And then it does make it worse that it was recorded, and now it's on the media, and not everybody done seen it. I just feel like the NBA didn't do enough for Jordan Poole. That's how I feel. I mean, you know, you could say that, but what you want them to do? That's embarrassing. That's just, like That's true, but it's just one of them things. Either he's just going to make you or break you, so... I just you. feel like I just feel like we all know who the problem is. Draymond is very much problematic. We see it all the time. You got umpteen ejections, umpteen flagrants. Like you, you the problem. All these technical fouls and I don't know. That may be true, but at the end of the day, you know, it's the it's, it's Golden State. It's their organization. At the end of the day, it's what they want to do. If they want to keep Draymond and, you know, get rid of Poole, that's, hey, they can do that. That's just what it is. I mean, like I said, either it's going to make you or break you. Jordan Poole got to come back and, you know, he got to he gotta step it up. He got to, you know, do his big one so, this year. So how, how you feel about what his dad said? Why wait? He called him what a soft A B. Yeah, I mean, why but wait? You, I've been you seeing waited it. this whole year, bro. Like you could have said something to him. You done seen this man how many days? I didn't seen a lot of people say that. Like why wait? I feel like why does it matter? Because it's you know well, you. That's it, my son. It don't, that's I don't true. Know. But we we walk past each other almost every single day. That's true. If true. you got something to say, just put him. I mean side that man. That man said. I'm pretty sure his dad said that Draymond been avoiding him. <laughs> You can't. It's literally <laughs> impossible. I don't care what they said. Like, it's not possible to just avoid that man. We have to. We we have to be here. Like, we're, yeah. we're here. We're gonna see each other. Quick conversation. Boom. Whatever it said, it said. End of it. But you wait a year. 
And after your son get shipped out to say something, like, but that's just me. Like, if it was me, I wouldn't have waited. But that's I wouldn't either. Yeah, I would have said something. The next time I saw you, it really was gonna be on site. Exactly. It wasn't gonna be no but, no interview, no media type. Either, right. Like, but I mean, that's what he wanted to do. That's what he did. And, yeah. And look, here we are now. Okay, so that brings me to the next thing. How you feel about the ESPN laying off over six thousand people? I mean, honestly, it was kind of it was kind of a shock. Just knowing who they laid off, you know, you know, you got Jalen Rose, Max Kellerman, you know what I'm saying? These are big names. I know it's a lot more, but those are the two I could just think of off the top of my head. But yeah, Jalen Rose, I remember. It's kind of it was just crazy. Like, dang, all right. Just why? I mean, obviously, it's a reason. You ain't just doing it for no reason, so. Well, when I've been reading, I've been, you know, seeing stuff on social media and stuff like that. Reading um, interviews and articles and stuff like that. And they say that it was, like, a cost-effective reason. They said that they didn't let anybody off due to their performance. But when they say that, I feel like, mm, so then how do you choose? You just randomly choosing thousands of people? That don't make sense to me. <laughs> yeah, like, how do you pick, you know, who get to stay and who get to go, exactly. like, I don't know, like, it's a lot of people they laid off, like, people who done been there for years, and now all of a sudden and they, they just they gone, time, yeah, you know? and all of a sudden they just gone, and that, that you know, that'll really do something to somebody mental in his own, like, yeah. so that's my say, job, like, mm-hmm. you don't even know what they thinking now, like, you don't know if they knew, I don't, I don't think they knew, I feel like they would have, they would have, you know, said something that they knew what was really going on. But the fact that they probably didn't, it's like, all right, damn. Now what? Yep. So how you feel about, okay, what's that man named Stephen A. Smith wanting Shannon to come on? So, okay, okay, let's talk about, first, let's talk about Shannon and Skip. Skip and Shannon. You know I love them. We watched them together. We was watching them together every morning since. We done met, and now it's like weird. We can't even get up and watch them no more. Yeah, we we saw it coming, or at least I we did. yeah we did. Like, we definitely did. It was it was it was real unfortunate when it happened. It's mm-hmm. just like you, we were seeing it in real time. Though. Yeah, and for a second I thought you know they was cool. You know they fixed it, but when that uh, report came out, it was mm-hmm. like yeah it's over with. And now that they now that he gone. First of all, he gone skip, skip. I don't know what skip got going on. Mm-hmm. He ain't looking too hot right now. No, he ain't. It's been a little minute since he's been off the air, so it's like you got to come with something. But Stephen, they said he coming with something. He said, "I'm trying. I want him. I want Shannon." I mean, if they do pull that off, I'm tuned in. That's all I know. We tuned in for sure, but I think it's a bad idea. We seen what the ESPN just did to these thousands of people. And although they didn't lay off Stephen A and they claiming it was a random thing, which isn't true, because you kept Stephen A. Y'all knew better than to get rid of him. Well, because Stephen A is they knew, ESPN. They knew better than to get rid of So you can't say we randomly getting rid of people because you're not. It's all strategic. And it's like if Shannon gets on there, I feel like he definitely, definitely aren't going to boost the ratings for okay. sure. But I feel like he not safe. Just like them other thousands of people wasn't safe. See, I feel like he is safe. And then, even if he wasn't safe, it's him. So he could, he, yeah. He, he done built his name up to the point where if they were... Think about it. They gonna have to have him for at least two or three years. I doubt they'll have him for some months or yeah. just a year. It's gonna be some type of time, so... He do that time, say it's three years. Okay, if they was to cut him loose, he could still go somewhere else. He could still build his name up and say, all right, I'll just get my own show. Like, I don't see them doing that. So regardless of what they going to do, if they get him, I feel like he'll be straight. So. No, I agree. I definitely agree with that, especially because it's Shannon. He really don't need them per se. Like, he could go make his name somewhere else. Exactly. So... So the next thing that we're going to talk about is mental health and social media. 
a lot of the times, the first thing that people do when they wake up is open Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever you own. And a lot of the times, you know, we on the shade room or we on whatever blog sites. And the first thing that you see is the current events that's going on in the world. And we all know what just happened with Carly Russell and her line about her abduction. And I've been seeing a lot of posts and tweets and, you know, think pieces that people say because she lied other Black girls who are, you know, reported missing or abducted are going to have a least likelihood of people taking us seriously or people going to go look for us. I personally disagree with that. And I feel like people saying that is very, for lack of a better word, very nasty. Because I see a lot of other black people saying that. And I just don't understand why that would be the think, the thought process. Like, if somebody decides not to look for us, then... They just ain't want to look for us to begin with. I don't think that Carly Russell lying should have an impact on the seriousness we take of missing black girls or missing black people, period. What do you think? Yeah. Um, people saying those things, it's, it's just crazy. Like, yeah, what she did was uh, messed up. and She had no business doing that. But to say, oh, uh, well, for the next person, I guess we just, uh, we'll just look the other way. No, we, we shouldn't be doing that. Or whoever is doing that should be doing that. Because even though she lied, it's, it's really real out there. Like, mm-hmm. just because one person lied don't mean there's thousands more out there who ain't being heard or something like that. Like, we shouldn't let, you know, one person just, uh change how we uh view things how you know how they really are in the world because it's people really out here going missing people really out here kidnapping girls boys black girls black boys like everybody just you know they just don't care but exactly and one person don't speak or stand for a whole race like that's crazy. Like, if we wanted to really pull up some facts and stuff, I'm pretty sure we can find a white girl that done lied. Like, it's not, like, it's not good, of course. Like, I'm not, I'm not justifying what she did. I'm not sticking up for her or none of that because that was messed up. But at the end of the day, like, I feel like what's more messed up is that's the narrative we going with. Like, that's where people taking it. I don't really like that. Mm-hmm. But the other topic that I want to talk about in social media is something that recently popped up. I want to say I saw it the other day ago. It was JT took um, Young Miami's 10-year-old son to Rolling Loud, I believe it was. And in the video, first of all, people didn't even know it was Rolling Loud until JT came out and said that. And she said she takes him every year and they have a great time. And um, in the video, he was basically throwing money at strippers. And, you know, JT said security was on it. Like, he wasn't being touched. Nobody was going to touch him. But, you know, people on the media, people on Twitter basically was saying how it is distasteful. Like, it's not good. Like, how do you feel about that? Kids being in those type of situations. Uh, I mean, would I do it? Probably not, you know. Definitely not. I'm not a parent, so I don't know, you know, how their thought process is. Right. But just, just like, you know, people going to do what they want to do with their kids. Mm-hmm. If she believes that her son is okay and, you know, he's being protected, then, you know, so be it. You know, she has every right to do what she want to do with mm-hmm. her son. But, you know, if it was me, I just, I don't know, I just couldn't see, not at 10, you know what I'm saying, like, Obviously, with the way the world works these days, kids gonna know about stuff younger than maybe we did or probably our parents did or however you want to look at it. But to just, you know, go ahead and take him and have him doing stuff like that at that age, I don't know. Probably not. Because it's just like, okay, what if, you know the roles were reversed and mm-hmm. it was a young girl you know how people think like no right, i was just gonna ask that that was literally the next question i was gonna say do you think it's a gender thing like do you think if it was a little girl they would be accepting 
a 10 year old little girl at the strip club throwing money at men say literally the same thing would they be okay with that absolutely not they'd be in an uproar right so like the end of the day people gonna do what they wanna do with their kids if you think your if they think their uh, kids are doing good then it's just what it is but do you think this will damage them like in the long run like when they grow up do you think it's like making them grow up too fast or like I mean, maybe but at the same time like everybody's different yeah so but maybe too much for one 10 year old he might be you know he might just be I mean I don't want to say immune to it but it's just like you know it ain't gonna really it ain't gonna really mess with me in the long run like I don't know I feel like I feel like that's true but then I feel like 10 is 10 like no matter how quote unquote mature a child is at their age I just feel like we well like you said we're not parents but I feel like you know, if I was in that parent role, or parents should probably try to do better at keeping children in children's places. You know, because like you said, it's much different now than it was then. Like, stuff is so accessible. Kids is on iPads at the age of two. Like, people ain't outside no more. They just on the game. Like, so I get how people could literally, how kids could grow up faster than usual. But I just want to do, when it's me, I want to do my best to keep my child a child. Like, as long as possible. Like, not doing grown folk things. Because, you know, people can say what they want. Throwing money at strippers, that's grown folk things. A regular teen-year-old can't get in a strip club. And, you know what I'm saying? Period. Like, if they wanted to get him in there, in an actual strip club, they probably could. But, like, a regular, regular person with, you know, what they call us broke, a broke person can't just go get their kid in no strip club. True. So, that should say something. Like, it's not, you know. Which brings me to Lil Boosie. When I was thinking about this, I thought about him. And he took his nephews and his son, I believe they were, they were 12 or 13 or so. He um, took them to the strip club. And he, he either took his kids to the strip club or he allowed them to get oral sex from women. I know that happened for sure, but I'm not sure about the strip club thing, but... That right there, when I read that, that took me aback. And he was really, like, defending it. He was saying, like, that's what happened to him. That's how, you know, his folks did. da 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 Like, and I feel like he didn't get enough outrage. Like, people were definitely outraged. But I just feel like if it was a girl, like, it, it just it's just way, way, way worse. Like, that's literally rape. Like, people could say what they want, spend it how they want to. It's literally rape. He said that the kids was well taken care of. Well taken care of, he know. How you know? Like, you tricking on the same females you got your sons and nephews tricking on? Like, y'all don't think that's weird? Like, y'all don't think that'll mess with somebody mental? That'll mess with them growing up? Like, where's the line? Yeah, I mean, Boosie is, uh, Oh, I don't know, child. He he, different <laughs> to say the least. But at the same time, it's just like like I said, it's like it's, it all depends on who the who the kid is. Now, I'm, am I saying what he did was right? No. But I'm saying like his son just might be they just they they might be okay with it. I mean, it's crazy. A kid it's crazy. can't like. But you just never know. You never know. I do know. A kid can't, a kid can't say for themselves, like, I'm okay with this. Because they don't know no better. I feel like it's literally the adult's job in the scenario. The lady in question and Bootsy, like, these people should know better. And should be setting better examples for their sons. Because we see how Bootsy is. He's him. That's all we can say about that. He's him. And we don't want or, I mean, I don't know what he wants, but I wouldn't want my son to grow up and be clowned out like that. You know what I'm saying? You you successful. Definitely not taking that away from you. But things you say and the way that you act and all that other good stuff, that's just not a good example in my opinion. But like you said, people going to do what they want with their kids. And I'm a firm believer in not telling nobody how to raise their own children. So, guess it is what it is. 
Next thing we're going to talk about is something I've really been wanting to talk about for a long time. Because if you know me, then you know I'm real passionate about music. I like talking about music. I like debating about music. All that other good stuff. So the quote-unquote great debate that's going on is, are artists responsible for censoring music? I truly believe that they are not. And I say that because these artists are not the fathers or mothers of people's children and i really wish they would stop acting like they are in the nicest way possible like if you believe that what this artist is talking about in their music is you know too explicit for your child then you should ban that music in your household and then you know i hear the argument well kids are going to do whatever they want and then i feel like that's a problem within your household it's not Dirk or Young Boy or Nicki Minaj or nobody else's fault that your kid don't listen to you when you say not to listen to them. I feel like they can put out whatever music they want because it's their art. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's just, <laughs> just like when we was kids, man. You know, you in the car, or you at home, you rapping whoever song, singing whoever lyrics. <laughs> What your parents say. You better know your school or like you know them lyrics. Right. <laughs> At the end of the day, as long as you handling your business and doing what you need to do, whether it's school, work, whatever, then what you listening to shouldn't matter. You can like whoever you like, mm-hmm. you can listen to whatever music you want to listen to and still be a productive person in society. Like all this craziness people be saying oh because he listened to this he act like this like no like that's not true like in my opinion it's just not true like do what you're supposed to do and then listen to whoever you want to listen to just separate the two it's it shouldn't be hard to separate the two no for real so does music affect your mental health personally like is there certain artists or certain songs that you would say affect you like whether positively negatively or anything like that oh yeah it's a lot of artists and songs that i could just you know listen to and just you know i know when i'm listening to it it's gonna, it's gonna get my mind right it's gonna, it's gonna chill me out mm-hmm. it's gonna calm me down it's gonna get me through the day or whatever i'm going through at that moment and then there are some artists you know if I want to get hype, obviously we know we can, we can go to them and listen to them, and still it's not affecting me negatively. It's just you know it's a it's positive, but just in a more energetic way. So I wouldn't even say it's negative. Any music I listen to is for a positive reason. <laughs> Straight up. You got any artists in mind? Any particular artists that's your go-to? Nah, it really just it depends on what I'm feeling at that very mm-hmm. moment. Like it could be anybody, like literally anybody. If I'm feeling that song, then I'm just gonna go find it. I'm gonna go listen to it. But no particular artist. I listen to too many people, so I suppose I got a couple that I could just go to to get my mind right. Let you do. <laughs> I got a couple. I got I got the big three. Like anytime. They eat my move or anything. I could be mad. I could be sad. I could be happy. I'm going to turn on that Wayne, Nicki, and Drake. And I'm going to be fine. Like, it's just always been like that for me. And people be like, Deja, you need to get with the times. No, the times need to get with Deja because I'm going to forever be listening to them because they are that. Like, their music just timeless. You feel know I me? Mean? Like, that's just me. That's, 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 that's the topic for another day because I could talk about them all day long. All day long. But we're going we gonna to end that with that. Okay, we talked about the entertainment side of mental health and all that other good stuff. But we got to get serious for a moment and talk about Florida and their new law that they just recently passed inside the school system. Basically, the new teaching standard is to include that 
people gained personal benefit from slavery. First of all, just reading that when I read that, it was very much insulting, I feel like, to black people. Um, I just feel like they're trying to whitewash history in the schools. And by whitewash, I mean alter, change, reconstruct, however you want to put it. They're trying to make it into a way that favors them. You know, and to make it not seem as bad as it was. And I just feel like that's messed up. Like, you just need to tell the tell the story how it was. Like, that's what it is. There's no what 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 personal benefit because we could we have gotten from slavery. I need to know. Yeah. Whoever said that, you know, they during Governor of Florida. Yeah, obviously was a uh, on something, you know. I we, We've been seeing, you know, the higher ups and then uh, some of the big drug users, you know, you got the White House scandal on what's going on over there. But yeah, it's uh, it's, it's just crazy because you know the older the older I get, the more I uh, just kind of sit back and think like they really had us messed up like all those years, all these years, and to just make it seem like. Oh, it didn't happen, or it wasn't as bad, or, you know, it was a good thing for y'all. You know, y'all were gaining something, like, no, like... The only thing we gained is to goddamn keep an eye on, you know what I'm saying, certain certain stuff to make sure, like, can't get too comfortable, basically. Like, you just never know. Mm -hmm. And a, a lot of... A lot of people, I feel like, want to do that because they want to prove that they're not racist so bad they want to prove that they're not bad white people and i feel like you can prove that without trying to reconstruct history Mm -hmm. like like tell it how it was tell it how it is and mm -hmm. then you know fix it by you know doing better moving forward Mm -hmm. like but not acknowledging it and like, you know, trying to bury it. Yeah. It's not going to work. Cause it's not. We ain't going. It's not like this happened 400 years ago. Like It's been happening for the last 400 years. We just you know, started doing good for ourselves. It was, what, 50 years ago? We, if we want to put a, a number to it, like really start to make some type of change 50 years ago, which is not that long ago. At all. So, you know, it's, it's crazy. Like... I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't either. I'm really, really disgusted with, like, the whole law and everything. It's really alarming. Um, You know, I saw people talking about it for, like, a day, and then, like, it kind of died down. Hype kind of died down. I feel like we, especially, like, people our age, you know, we're coming up, you know, the new adults, the young adults, we need to start taking this type of stuff more serious, and we need to be, like, more aware of what's going on because soon these gonna be our kids you know what i'm saying or our nieces and nephews and stuff like that in the school system and we don't want them to be taught wrong you know we don't we don't want none of that which brings me to the talk as a black person you know what the talk is do you agree that we should continue having the talk as generations go on Oh yeah, you have to. Because yeah. No matter what they say, or no matter how they try to make it seem, it's still open season out there. Like that's just what it is. So whether it's you know my child, you know niece, nephew, whoever, you gotta let them know. You gotta let them know what it is. You gotta let them know. You know what's been going on before they got here, and what's mm-hmm. still going on while they're here. So, yeah, we definitely give them the talk. Like, it has to be done. It's one it of those does. things that has to be done. Did you get the talk growing up? I mean, I'm pretty sure I did, but if I didn't, it's like you know, or yeah. at least for me, I know. Like, I always knew. Like, all right, be on your P's and Q's, cause. It can get hectic out here. Like, we knew that. So, just one of those things, like, maybe into the future it might be better. But, you still, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta let them know. 
I think that other races should have the talk too. Like, obviously, it won't be the same talk, but I feel like I feel like a lot of other races, a lot of non-black races, they really try to pretend like nothing happened. You know, I just feel like when you pretend like nothing happened, it gets weird. Like, it gets awkward. You start learning things, and you start learning the incorrect things, and you start having these different perspectives and different opinions and attitudes towards people that you shouldn't even have in the first place. So I just feel like, you know, white people need to talk as well. Like, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure some do, but a lot of them don't. Yeah, I feel like majority probably don't, and I feel like that should probably be something that, you know, we they work towards fixing. Because if not, I never see it being more inclusive. Like, it's always going to be a separation. Mm -hmm. And there's always going to be a divide, but it shouldn't have to be, you know what I'm saying? Like, a chaotic one. It shouldn't have to be. It's always pressure. Yeah, it shouldn't have to be that. So, that's how I feel about that. And hopefully, I feel like, hopefully other people go and look into it after hearing this. Because it is a serious issue look into you know if you live in florida vote 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 you know actually vote actually read actually listen you know don't just vote off of what other people say go and do your own research because every vote definitely does count and every vote definitely does matter So you mean to tell me this is the end of episode two. I had a really good time filming this one. This one was really, really fun. (laughs) I think that I'm going to have to do special guests more often. So if you're interested in coming on the show, you know, shoot me a DM, a text, a call, whatever it is. I got some people already lined up. Not going to say no names, not going to give no hints. But some people have already came to me and told me that they're interested in coming on interested about talking about things so if you one of them people who haven't said anything to me yet i'm very much open to any and everybody multiple people it doesn't have to be just one so y'all let me know make sure y'all follow um mind you on apple spotify and amazon i'm gonna make sure i leave all the links in the episode description so y'all be able to find it Another thing I want to mention is a YouTube channel. I've been getting a lot of like DMs and texts and suggestions, even Trey over here pressuring me to make a YouTube. So y'all let me know like if that's something y'all think I should do. Is that something y'all want? If I do a YouTube, should it be like? Instead of me hiding behind the camera, as one of my brothers told me yesterday, should I get in front of it, like, and y'all see us with the whole podcast set up? Y'all let me know what y'all want. Um, any thoughts, Trey? Um, no, not too many thoughts. I just know I will be back on, so. Oh, you will? I will be back for another episode. Don't know when, but (laughs) y'all will hear me or see me. Mm. YouTube channel, y'all, y'all let her know about the YouTube. We'll see y'all. We'll we'll see about the YouTube. Y'all, y'all let me know though. If y'all want it, I I give it to y'all. I'm for the people. But I really ain't feeling the YouTube, y'all. I ain't feeling the YouTube. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. We'll see Trey next time. Bye.